Welcome everyone. I'm Lucio Bordonaro, customer service specialist and trainer at WebRatio. And uh, today we are going to see the new features included in WebRatio BPM platform 8.5. This is the webinar agenda. And the topics that we will see during the webinar, starting from the distribution and leave policies, then we will see the BPM driven uh, notifications. We will have a look at the throwing and catching events included in, uh, in the version 8.5. Then we will have a look at the differences between the BPM uh, community platform and the BPM professional platform. We will give a look finally at the BPM engine build and the build also for the processes and their version. At the end of the webinar, I will uh, give 10 or 15 minutes for questions and, uh, and answers as usual. Uh, if you have questions during the webinar, please write them into the GoToMeeting uh, chat. Okay, so uh, let's start with the first topic, which is the distribution and leave policies. So, um, BPM Platform 8.5 introduces the distribution and leave policies management. Uh, since uh, when you model a process, you have to know and you have to determine in a such way who will be assigned to the next activity that you're going to execute. And as well, you have to, uh, you have to handle uh, the situation in which uh, someone leaves an activity that was claimed previously and uh, this activity needs to be reassigned. For this reason, uh, Webration introduces the distribution and leave policies, okay, providing a set of built-in options that cover uh, the most of the real-world situations. In the image here, you can see uh, the situation of a distribution policy. Uh, you have a task and you have a set of users that you have to assign to this task. So the distribution policy decides using some criteria one of those users. Instead, when you have a policy uh, working, you have one user that works on a, on a task and um, this user leaves the task, so you need to reassign once again the task to the users. I've prepared for the uh, today's webinar uh, a very simple project. You know, it's a BPM process with two lanes, one for employees, one for supervisor. The employee lane has two different tasks, okay? Vacation request and review and submit, while the supervisor approves the request. We are going to see the distribution policies for the employee lane since we have two different tasks and we have also two different users. I've already prepared the users and I've already connected the users to the roles. So let's start by uh, creating a new instance of the process. So I log in as uh, an employee user, okay? I use as in the previous webinar, the Swagger API of our uh, BPM engine. So here I log in as AMP1 with password. Okay. This is the response of the service. So I take note of the token. I prepared also this, uh, this file with some useful information. Then I go back to the Swagger API and I start the process. So I go to the process services and here I put the authorization token. The process name is uh, vacation request. Okay. While the event name, which is the start event that I'm going to execute, can be retrieved also by the model and it's start. Okay. The response that you see here is the first task that I'm able to execute, which is the one with OID 6, okay, which is a status ready and assigned to employee 1. This uh, because the vacation request 
task as a distribution policy, which is the default one, allocates to first user in lane. Okay, so basically now we can uh, manage that task going into the task services. Okay, this is the task services. So I put here the authorization token, the task ID, which was the one returned by the previous service, which is number six. And the action that I do is to claim this task. And you can see here the response with all the parameters of this task. Okay. So the next step will be to complete this task. So the action is complete and I've already prepared the set of parameters, okay, which needs to be passed here as, uh, as input parameters, okay. So I prepare here the uh, request object with the parameters set of variables, okay, and I copy and paste from my example file. Then I uh, make the request and this is the response. So you can see that it is linking to the review and submit task, okay, which has OID number seven. This task is in status ready and is assigned once again to the user employee one. The reason is that also the review and submit task has the distribution policy allocate to first user in lane. This distribution policy uh, defines that the first user who completes a previous action will be uh, assigned to the next one of the same process instance. Okay, so let's see how to um, how to change the distribution policy for these review and submit tasks. So you can just select the task from the PPM editor. You can change it, for instance, to offer to all. Offer to all does a different job. Offer to all uh, takes the task and uh, doesn't assign the task to any user of our BPM. So the task is free and can be worked by anyone, okay? So in order to apply this change, we save the project and then we uh, publish once again the BPM process, okay? As soon as it completes, uh, you will have the new, um, the new Swagger API showing the possibility of running uh, a new process instance, okay? So you should see here from the browser, you see it is opening, okay? So what we have to do now is to uh, start another process, okay? So we can use the same method that we uh, had previously. I use the same employee, so this part of the process doesn't change. So it's always um, it's always employee one who makes uh, who makes the request for the first time, okay. This time, of course, the OID of the next task, which is vacation request, changing because this is a new task instance, which is number nine. So you can go to the task services put here the authorization token, the task ID, and from here we claim this action, okay? We have once again the parameters, so we can complete the action. I'm going to use uh, once again the same values, but this is just an example, so it doesn't matter the uh, matter of the information. So I put here the same values. I execute the request. And now you see that the next task, which is review and submit, is in status ready, but is not assigned to any user, okay? This because of the, um, of the offer to roll uh, distribution policy, okay? Well, let's see how the uh, lead task works, okay? So by default, on each task of the BPM process, the lead policy is set to reset, okay? Um, you can change it like you did for the distribution policy and you will see the same result. If you leave the reset policy, 
uh, it will be applied once again uh, the same distribution without changing the task status. Otherwise, you can choose one of these options. The output will be the same. Uh, the only difference is that we have to leave the task. So let's do it. Uh, the next task here was the uh, number 10, preview and submit. So what we have to do is, first of all, to claim the task number 10. OK, perfect, which is assigned once again to employee number one. The next step will be to leave the task, OK? If you leave the task, it remains in status active, OK? And now it can be claimed by another user, OK? Or eventually you can change the offer, uh, you can change, sorry, the leap policy and use, for instance, like we did for the distribution offer to all, OK? Well, uh, now we can uh, have a look at the next topic of this webinar, which are the BPM-driven <coughs> notification. BPM platform 8.5 introduces the BPM-driven notification to notify users when the process instance crosses the lane and comes into the lanes to which the user belongs, OK? So for instance, here you have this example of task one and task two, which are on different lanes. When the process instance crosses the boundaries of lane one and goes to lane two, the users of lane two must be notified, OK, that there is a new task to work on. This is um, an, automatic, uh, an automatic procedure that you can activate directly from the lane. So you position yourself on the outline on the lane. You have the second tab of the properties, which shows this mail option, which can be checked. Okay? If it is checked, it will show you this. Uh, it will send you, sorry, the mail message, okay, which is formatted using this property. So you will receive new queued activity with task name and process instance name. OK, and this email is configured with the uh, um, main server, OK, that you define into the service data providers of the associated VPN engine, OK? So basically, in order to receive that notification, uh, we need to, uh, OK, complete at least the second task of the employee lane, which is review and submit. So someone has to complete that action. Let's do it with the other uh, employee. So I log in with employee two, okay, which is the other user profile, <clears throat> which gives me back this token. Okay, now I should be able to work on the task number 10. Let's see if this is true. OK. This is still assigned to another user. So let me do, let me do like this. I go on with the, uh, with the previous user. OK. So it's task number 10. I do the claim. OK. Now I can complete it. This task doesn't require modification to the parameters. OK. You see that the employee lane has no more tasks to execute. So now uh, the flow of the process goes to the approve or reject task, OK, which is into the supervisor lane. We should have received at this point a notification for that task, OK? So let me, uh, let me check if that notification arrived. OK, it arrived, and you can see it here. OK, new queued activity, review and submit in process vacation request number three. OK, so this is the, um, the notification sent by the BPM engine. OK, uh, let's go to the next topic, which is the throwing and catching events. OK. 
throwing and catching events are useful when you need to interrupt temporarily the flow of the process, okay, uh, while waiting to catch events, okay, in the runtime execution. There are a series of options which are implemented in BPM Platform 8.5. And uh, some others are yet to come. They will they will be available soon. The most interesting ones are the message and signal. Okay, uh, we will see first of all the message catching events. Okay, and we will do a modification to the process. Okay, so I'm going to delete this flow, the flow that goes from review and submit to approve or reject. Okay, since I want to put here a catching intermediate event for a message, okay, this means that before proceeding with the um, with the approval or reject of a specific vacation request, the supervisor has to wait for a message, okay, a message to come. Okay, in order to apply the changes, I need to save everything and generate the BPM project, okay? Okay, let's wait for it to recalculate it. Okay, once the process is updated, you can browse back to the uh, <coughs> Swagger homepage, okay? And you can log in as supervisor since now the process is the process instance that we run previously it's into the supervisor lane. Okay, so what we do here is to log in as supervisor, okay, with the password that is passed. This is the uh, token for our authentication. I copy it here. And then uh, we can have a look at our process definitions, okay? In order to get information about the process that we are able to execute. So if you make this call to the process definition with the token of the supervisor, you will see that we have the process vacation request and we have an event, a catching message event, okay? which is called catching message, and this is the definition ID, okay? So if I just copy this ID, as I will need it later, and I put it here, okay? The next step is that I can actually throw the message, okay? And let the process, uh, let the process go on, okay? So, um, Basically, if you want to have a look at the current status of the process, you can use the uh, authorization of the supervisor and generate a diagram uh, image, okay? I really think it's the number one process. Let me check uh, from, <clears throat> from the uh, database, okay? So I can have, okay, it's process number three, sorry. So. I generate the diagram image for process number three. I take the diagram uh, ID and then I download it, okay? Using always the supervisor token. Okay, oh, okay, this was the previous one. Okay, so you see that in the previous uh, version of the process, without the caching, it goes directly to the approval or reject, okay? If now um, you start a new process and let's do it directly from the user services, login in, since we need to restart the process as employee. Okay, you take note of the token and you start a new process. So I'm going to be a little bit quicker than previously, so I go to the processes, I go here, I say that the process name is vacation request, and the event name is start, and then all the other details are not required. 
Okay, the next task is number 13. So uh, to the task services, this is the authorization ID, this is the task ID, and I want to claim it, okay? Once I claim the task, I can do the complete, okay? The parameters, I use always the, uh, the previous one, okay? Oh, it found uh, an unexpected character here, so maybe I just need to remove uh, something. Let me do it once again. So these are the parameters, okay? And this is the complete action, okay? Okay, it worked. So you can go to the preview and submit, which basically just needs to be claimed and completed. Okay, so let's complete it. Okay, so there are no more chain tasks for the employee. So we can uh, log in as supervisors and see where the process, this new process is, okay? So I take note of the token and then I generate the diagram image for the last process, okay? Which should be number four. So let's check on the database just to be sure, okay? It's number four. I generate the diagram image and I take note of the ID and then I download the ID from here, okay? Using, pay attention, the token of the supervisor. So now you can see that in the new version of the process, our runtime execution is stuck waiting for the catching message event, okay? So what we need to do in order to let the process uh, continue is to throw that message, okay? Uh, messages can be thrown using the post message method, okay? Which is available into the uh, events, okay? So it should be here, you see post events message. The authorization is the one of the supervisor and the, uh, we don't require specific parameters, but we just need the definition ID for that message, okay? So you can replace it with this string and you can try it, okay? Uh, actually, it doesn't seem to work, but let me just refresh it, okay? It may be a problem Sorry, can, it may be a problem with the uh, authorization token. So uh, definition ID, let's put it, let's put this one, which should be our definition ID. Okay, it seems that there is a problem with the definition ID. So what we do in order to get the current uh, process definition, is to go to the process definitions of the current user, okay? Using the token of the supervisor. Okay, so this should be the catching message event, okay? Okay, which can be passed here. Okay, and then it can be executed. It's still giving an error, but okay. By the way, uh, after the message is cached, the execution completes and goes to the next task, okay? Um, okay. Let's have a look instead to the signal, to the signal events, okay? What is the usage of signals? Well, signals can be uh, 
used to broadcast uh, messages in terms of signals, okay? So basically you can create a signal start event from here, okay? Let's call it, uh, I will model something to manage the office uh, vacation, okay? This is a signal start, so it means that my process can also start from here, okay, using this uh, specific signal. Uh, signal needs a sequence flow that leads to the next activity to execute, which is the approve or reject in this situation, and needs to be built, so needs to refer to a signal. If you select this start signal, we can go to the properties view, where you have the signal property, okay, from here, uh, you can define a new signal. I've already did one, which is the office uh, vacation. Uh, let me uh, let me delete it so you can so that I can show you how to create a new one. Okay, so you open the signal, you press the create new signal, and then you write here the name for your signal. I use the same of the start event. Okay. From here, you can add all the uh, parameters that, uh, that are used by the process. So you can create the first parameter, which is request title of type string. Then you have another one, which is uh, start date of type date. And then you have the last one, which is number of days of type integer. Okay. Oops, it didn't get the entry. Okay, then you save, okay? You close the signal. And if you go back here, you can see that it's automatically assigned to this property. The next step is to bind the properties of the signal to the process parameters that you already have. So you can use the select button here, and the if you use the same names, you can use the guest binding buttons. Okay, that will give you the correspondence between the signal parameters and the process parameter, okay? Well, at this point, if you save and generate uh, the process, you can uh, let the process start directly from a signal, okay? From the start signal event. This will skip all of the previous part of the process. Okay, so let's wait for uh, the new Swagger homepage. Okay, okay, so uh, the signal is inside the supervisor lane. Okay, so what we have to do is to make the login as supervisor. Okay, so you go here and you use the uh, supervisor credentials, which are so for the name and pass for the password. Okay, it generates a token that we copy and put here. And then from the definition services, you can have a look not only at the process definition, but also to the signal definition. So you put here the authorization token and you press uh, the try button. Okay, if this doesn't work, it means that your current user doesn't have all the rights to execute this call. So what you do in alternative is to log in as administrator of the process, okay? In this way, it, uh, it must work since you have all the uh, all the rights, okay? Okay, this is our definition of the signal, okay? The signal is defined by these parameters, which are the number of days, the request title, and the start date, okay? In this way, a process can be started, so it can be, uh, a signal can be broadcasted using the process services Okay, here you have events signal, okay? So if you uh, put here the authorization token of the user 
of the lane in which the signal is, so the supervisor, and you provide all of the parameters which are basically the same, okay, that you use for other um, other tasks inside your uh, your process. You just have to copy the definition ID of that signal, which is one of the parameters returned by the definition services, okay, and it will throw the signal, okay. So if you do like this, it should work, okay? So you see that it went through the uh, office vacation start event. And at this point, we throw the signal so we can see the current status of the process, okay? The new instance of the process should be number uh, six or five, sorry. So you can go to the diagram uh, diagram method, okay, and ask for the image of process number five. It generates the ID of the image, and then you can download the file using the service, okay? It will show you that this time the process started from the signal, okay, and went through the approve or reject task, okay? And now we need to claim this task and start working on it, okay? Uh, remember that signals can be used in, uh, in broadcast, so you can put many of them and in different lanes, okay? You throw them once and you manage several different process instances, okay? Let's go to the comparison between the BPM professional and community. So the main difference, and which is a crucial difference, is that the BPM professional platform lets you deploy the BPM engine and the processes both on premises and on cloud, uh, which is one thing that the BPM community platform uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't do, okay? Uh, moreover, in the BPM professional platform, you have support for the Red Hat OpenShift Cloud deploy, okay? Good. Another uh, new feature introduced with BPM platform 8.5 is the possibility of building the BPM engine, uh, creating a, de a dedicated build configuration, okay? So you can do it directly from the tool, okay? You can right click on the BPM engine configuration. You have three of them, a local, read at OpenShift and WebRacial Cloud. Let's do one example of local uh, build configuration. Here you basically have the name of the project and the reference to the providers, which are the engine database and the mail server that you use to send the emails, okay? Uh, once you build, you have um, an archive that you can deploy into your web application server. If you run the uh, generate and run command in the professional edition, it is deployed automatically on the embedded Tomcat, okay? The BPM engines uh, from this new version are able to run different processes and several versions of the same process, okay? In fact, this is the last topic of the webinar, which is the BPM process build and versioning. So by default, every time you, um, you make changes to the same BPM process, so you don't change the name of the process, and you uh, deploy it or generate to the same BPM engine, okay, through uh, through the generate and run command, for instance, when working locally. Um, these processes are automatically versioned by WebRatio, okay? So every instance of the process is versioned, okay? Uh, makes, uh, has the reference to the current version of the, of the BPM process. And every time you make changes and you deploy a new version, it automatically creates a new uh, process, okay? 
Another uh, new feature of Fabricio BPM platform, Professional Edition 8.5, is that you can create uh, also build configuration for BPM processes. Okay, the result of this um, of this configuration when built is a process archive file. Uh, so the extension is PAR. Okay, which can be used to upload a new version of the process. Okay, you have here a set of processes which are called archive services, okay, that using the authorization, typically the authorization token of an administrator of the of the process, you are able to refer a process, process archive file, sorry, on your file system, okay? And once you execute this uh, request, you can actually install a new version of that process in your VPN engine. When you work locally using the generate and run command, uh, this part, this, uh, this versioning is done automatically. And automatically you have the last version of the process which is available to be run. Okay? So this was the uh, last topic of the today's webinar. Um, as usual, I give you 10 or 15 minutes uh, for questions and answer. And as I also said previously, remember to write your questions into the GoToMeeting chat. So thank you for attending this first part of the webinar. Okay, um, there are some questions related to distribution policies. Okay, the first one is uh, how to create a distribution policy and I'm able to create it. Well, um, at the moment for distribution policy, you have to, you have to use um, the built-in options that the tool offers, okay, which are the allocate to first user in lane, offer to all, offer to previous row, allocate to previous user, and allocate to one, okay. 
uh, in the future, there will be the possibility of having a custom, um, a custom distribution policy. So basically, uh, you can select the task, say that the task has a custom distribution policy, and then go into the um, into the VPM engine, which is the model, okay, and connect an action definition to to that distribution policy, okay. So this will be available in the next releases of WebRatio. Another question is how to assign an activity to the manager of the employee. Okay, well, this, uh, this situation is more or less like uh, a custom distribution policy. So if in, if in your database of users, you have uh, a hierarchy of employees, so you know who is the responsible and the manager of the employee, um, you can build a custom distribution policy that goes into the database and selects um, and selects the correct user that you want to assign the task. Um, of course, this is not available for the same reason before. So, at the moment, this cannot be done uh, in WebRatio, but it will be available. This feature in the in the next release of WebRatio BPM platform. Okay. Um, I want to say one thing. Uh, remember that what I showed you uh, in terms of modeling the BPM process can be done both on the professional edition and community edition. Okay. Uh, so the only difference is in terms of deploy. Okay. Um, Another another question is, um, can I loop an activity? So execute an activity, simple, multiple uh, instances, or many times the same activity. Well, at the moment, this is not possible, but I think it will be included in the next release of Webration. Another question is, can I put more than one signal? Uh, yes, you can do it. You can do it. Uh, you can put different signals in different lanes of the BPM process. And you can also link different signals to the same task. Okay, of course, they can be executed in, in different uh, process instances. Another question is uh, if the if the uh, distribution policy and live policy has to be defined by IT people or they can be changed by the users. Well at the moment uh, the choice of the distribution policy and lib policy can only be done into the tool. Okay, so you do it while modeling the BPM process. I will give you more details uh, about the future implementation of a user interface for business people in order to let them um, define distribution policy from interface and not from the model. Okay. Okay, I don't see other questions coming. Uh, if your questions didn't get an answer during the webinar, um, you will receive the answer by email, okay? So we already have all of your emails, so you will be contacted in privately with the answer to your question. Okay, 
I don't see other questions coming. So I would like to thank you for uh, joining the webinar. Uh, you uh, you have the uh, you have you can refer to the contacts. The video will be uploaded on YouTube uh, very soon. I think tomorrow morning. Also, uh, you receive an email to fill out our evaluation survey about the webinar. So please remember to fill. And thank you once again for your attention. And see you at the next webinar. Goodbye.